Hi friends! I just wanted to do a quick video showing you how to construct the double hoop. Um, you already saw this if you purchased the holiday design, but I'm working on the big design now, so I'm just going to do a generic version, I guess. Um, so yeah, if you're from the future and you have a whole new design, it's the same concept to get your uh, your hoop double hooped. <laughs> okay, so for the the new pattern, the uh, the rainbow, we have a 12 inch hoop and a 7 inch hoop. Now you can use any size. If you want even more embroidery, you can use a smaller hoop in the center, right? So. Do whatever size you want. Have fun. But this this pattern obviously is is designed for for those two sizes. So, what I like to do is the center hoop first. Although I've seen some people do it the opposite way, they do the outer hoop and then the inner hoop, um, which I haven't tried. Maybe I should. <laughs> Maybe it's easier. I don't know. Um, so I'm using this linen blend. I'm finding it easier to use a linen versus a cotton to do this uh, double hooping. Um, okay, so you wanna make sure you're pretty centered on there. And you just hoop. You just do what you would usually do. <laughs> um, the key to this is just really having some nice tension on there. So, you know, I'm using these cheapy hoops and, and it seems to be okay. Um, if you're having a hard time with these hoops, like if the hoop, sometimes like they don't match up very well, the outer hoop and the inner hoop, the little manufacturing flaw, um, you may need to, um, find another one that has like a better fit or, um, I'm trying to think what else you could do because you can't really bind it because you would see that, you know what you could do? You could bind the outer this outer part because you're not going to see this okay does that make sense so you could wrap the outer hoop of your inner hoop <laughs> oh man because um, what you're going to see you're only going to see this from the front of your finished work see you don't see the this side okay so if you need to wrap that for better tension please do that's what I'm trying to say okay I think that made sense all right and then also since we're looking at it this way you can see if you want to do any um, finishing on the wood, like here I did a stain because I think the darker wood looks nicer with these colors. Um, you don't need to stain the back sides. So in this case, you would stain your inner hoop, including the inside of it. You're going to see that right here. And then just how you would regularly stain the outer hoop. So it's like backwards for the, the intersection. Okay. And, you know, once I get my double hoop set up, I haven't experimented with taking it back out. So I do all my stitching in there, etc. So if you do want to do any staining or painting of your hoop, I would do it ahead of time. I worry about removing my fabric from this setup and being able to get it back exactly how I had it with the embroidery or the design drawn on there. Um... I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just too much of a wuss to try it. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna do, I should tell you what I'm doing, right? So, <laughs> so here's our inner hoop. Turn it upside down on your outer big hoop. Actually, this is the inner big, oh my God, that's so confusing. Do what I do, not what I say. How's that, right? <laughs> it's turning into a tongue twister, my goodness. Okay, here's the outer hoop of the outer hoop. Maybe I should just call it the bigger hoop. The outer bigger hoop. Oh man, it's like a tongue twister. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna loosen this a bit more. And I wanna make sure that it's pretty centered. You can see on this one, I didn't have it perfectly centered. Um, I did this on the last video. You can see if I get out my ruler. Like down here at the bottom, this section from hoop to hoop is over three inches and up here it's like, it's only two and a half. So, cause I didn't center it right. Um, but it looks cool, I think. 
Um, so what I did is I made sure that section was at the bottom because it just it looks visually more pleasing to have the heavier section at the bottom, right? Gravity and whatnot. Um, so that's what that's about. So if you want to have it wonky, go for it. Um, I took this design on the computer and made some changes, I think, to make it better. So if you're looking at this design as you stitch this hoop, if you're looking at the photo of this hoop and you're like, that's not what she did, um, it should be pretty darn close. There could be some squigglies and some weird vines that are like at a slightly different angle. Um, and I know that, and I'm sorry if that gives you like anxiety. It'll be fine. Just go with it. I, I guess the problem is that when I originally stitched that, I did it freehand, so I was just kind of making it up. Um, so I did my best to convert it into a real pattern on paper for you. Okay, so I'm trying to smooth out my fabric here. Um, not necessarily pulling it tight, but just, it, I don't know if you saw, there were some little overlaps there. Um, and it looks like I might have this section a little bit bigger here. What what the heck measurement is that? I don't know what that was. Okay. So yeah, three inches. That's almost three inches too. Okay. It, it is a little bit smaller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull from this end first to kind of pull the whole thing in this direction. Okay. And then get out some creases as I go. Did that help? Okay, yeah, now that's like too, too small. Okay, but hopefully you understand what I'm doing. I'm trying to get it centered before I go too tight on here. But I'm going to just go for it. Okay, so I'm going to tighten the top. And I'm going to make a couple laps around tightening it so that I don't get out of center. Okay, here we go. So you can see I'm not pulling with all my might. I'm just kind of doing a first lap here. And we'll see how I did. I got some weird little creases over there. We'll see. See if we can get those out on the next lap. Okay. Cool. Looking better, so I'm going to tighten again. And then go another round. So you still have those creases. Okay, once you've finished tightening, you want to be careful because if, when it starts to get really tight, sometimes this inner tube, inner, <laughs> inner tube, sometimes the inner hoop can start popping out because of all that tension. So it's like a fine, delicate balance there. Um, but there we go. I think I'm in there pretty good, pretty tight. Um, awesome. So you want to be careful when you're actually stitching on here. Um, it's, you know, it's linen, um, and it's not like the most drum tight thing you've ever stitched on, okay? Just because of the nature of the shape. So, um, please be careful, like, especially when you're doing, like, any satin stitch work, um, that you don't have it too tight, because then you're gonna, you could get some warping going on. So just be, just be conscious throughout, you know, about your tension. Um, okay, so... Let's transfer the pattern. So you're going to have to print out your pattern and cut it out. Um, obviously, this didn't fit on one piece of paper. It's too big. Uh, so if you look at the original, you can see we got the three flowers across from the two flowers. So that's pretty easy to figure out. The, I'll have them numbered as well. So here's the three across from the two. And then these two... You gotta see, oh, I got it right. So if you didn't, you just swap them. I'll have them numbered, but if you like cut them and then all of a sudden you don't have the numbers on them anymore, that's an easy way to figure it out. 
Um, so I don't actually want them on this side because we're going to trace. Let me turn this over. And also, um, so it wouldn't be like this, would it? It would be upside down. So what you can do if you don't want to get lost is you can actually, um, you can tape it. Just grab your handy dandy tape, tape the, um, the pieces together. Let me do that. And then stick them in there so that you, you don't mess up the order. It'll be a little funky to get around the screw. So maybe I'll just do three so that we can tuck under the screw easier. And then the last piece should be pretty easy to figure out where that goes right there. And then tape that, um, which I will go ahead and do. So I can kind of see it from the back to line up the shapes. Uh, all right. Ta-da! So then I am going to just use a light source, um, a window or whatever, and trace the design, which will take some time. It's a big design. So sit down, get comfortable, especially if you're going to use like a permanent marker, like a Sharpie or something, you know, take your time. Um, there is a lot of a room in here for covering any mistakes you make. Um, you know, it's a pretty freeform floral design, so... You know, add French knots or detached chain stitch as needed to cover any mistakes. Um, so that's that. So you're just going to trace the design. Now, one thing you may have noticed while we were back here is this screw. Oh, and actually, before I forget to say, I don't care which way is up. It doesn't matter on here. Okay, so you can change it at the end. Once you, um, and I'll show you that once you have all this um, glued back, you can actually remove your outer hoop and change where you have the top. Okay, so it doesn't matter. It, you can have any way be up. So for this one, since I had it fatter at this end, that's just how, how I did it. Um, Okie doke. All right, so for the screw, this is where it gets a little funky. So what you're going to have to do is stitch a section and then you're going to have to move the screw to that section so that you can then stitch where the screw was. You don't have to move it back. You just have to move it once, but, but stitch a section and then move the screw. I will show you what that looks like. It's a little scary, but it's doable. All right. Thank you, pattern. Oh, I have more to say about the pattern. I won't get that too far, but let me finish telling you about the screw. I just have so much to say. I just keep getting distracted. Okay, so here's the scary part. So you're just going to loosen the screw. No more than you have to. Okay. And then you're just going to spin. See? And you can see the wrinkles. So I am like distorting stuff, but just enough okay so I would move it over here so now I can stitch here okay and just put it back on there just pressing and then tighten it back up this is again where I wish I had much bigger hands <laughs> or a smaller hoop the holiday one was a much more manageable size I actually bought this is a 12 inch I actually bought an 18 inch I haven't tried it yet because a that's that's a lot for my hands and b that's a lot of stitching to do too so okay you can see my hoop is like not perfect up here I don't know if you keep seeing I'm having to pull up here just kind of working with it okay so more about the pattern real quick here um so we have as far as the flowers go those are satin stitch easy peasy the leaves and the vines are where all the different stitches come in. So the larger leaves closest to the flowers or the fish bone. And then the large drawn leaves on here are either going to be satin stitch or fish bone. And that's all interchangeable, you know. Um, I did one section over here, fish bone, and over here, fish bone. And then across from each other, this way is the satin stitch, just to kind of have variety. I don't know. It really doesn't matter. Like, if you're just in love with satin stitch, just do satin stitch. You know, it's all interchangeable. 
And I think for all of my vines on this, I did backstitch just because it's my go-to stitch. But if you want to do stem stitch or split stitch, like do whatever the heck you want. Okay, so for the other vines, we have the ones with the spikies. And that's fern stitch. So whenever you see a, a vine with a spikies, fern stitch. Now, when you're transferring the pattern on here, you don't have to draw all these in. In fact, I wouldn't bother. I would just do the line, but I, for the pattern, I included the spikies just to differentiate the spiky vines from the naked vines. And the naked vines are where you're gonna have the detached chain stitch um, leaves. So those are just harder to draw in, so I decided to draw in the, the spiky vines instead, the fern stitch. So, um, and those are interchangeable too. If you hate one, just do the other kind or whatever. Um, and some of them, like I filled with another color, the detached chain. Um, so yeah, it's fun. It should be fun. Um, also around the flowers, you can see I just, I put in like straight stitches and detached chain stitches just to fill in more space. So you can do that too. There's, it's just fun. You guys just have a good time with this. I think the hard part obviously is setting up the hoop and getting the design on here, but then just enjoy yourselves. Okay. Um, what else can I tell you? As far as the colors go to get the ombre effect, you know, the bigger rows has the pinks and then the smaller roses have the peaches. And then I just concentrated the more yellow greens towards the centers here. And then as I got further and further away, I started incorporating more of the, the turquoise greens. Um, and then also the little French knots, the ones closer to the flowers are the magenta. And then further away, you get into the purple. So um, this is kind of a fun, fun play for your eyes there. Um, okay, so when you're all done stitching, probably wanna hear what you're gonna do after that, right? Oh, and also when you're stitching, if you don't like, I mean, I would probably cut these off, not all the way off, I, I would keep a little bit so it's easier for me to pull if I need to fix my tension, but these corners can sometimes end up getting stitched in, so just cut them off, you don't need that. You don't need that in your life. Okay, here we go. So, you're just gonna cut the edges here and go all the way around. I don't wanna bore you with that. And you're just gonna, it, make sure you're tight. I mean, if there's any like loose things, you know, go ahead and tighten those up. And then you're just gonna fold this over in, in glue, okay? I like to use just my eyelines. I store it upside down to avoid any any resentments. Um, if you want to use clamps while it's drying, feel free. I usually don't. It just it's sticky right away. Um, I haven't had any trouble. I mean, it's still. It doesn't look like it's coming apart anytime soon. So I think we're good. For the center, it's pretty much the same thing. You ready? Ready to have some fun? So you're gonna do some stabbing. <laughs> there we go. And actually, you don't have to. If you want to leave the centerpiece with um, with fabric, you wouldn't want a big hole in it. But you can, right? I mean, you can you can actually stitch here if you want to stitch um, names, dates, quotes, anything. More flowers, you can do that. I think it's fun to cut it out, and I want to show you how to do it anyway. So i um, just kind of making some stabs here. And I'm gonna do the same thing. So go around with about a little over a quarter of an inch edge here, etc. Um, and what I have to do on this side is you have to cut little notches in it, which I know sounds scary, but you just cut these notches to make it easier. What the heck am I cutting? There we go. So then you can fold them over like this. And it's the same thing, glue, fold. I remember this side was a little harder to keep down. I may have used clamps on this side. So that's it. I know it's a little uh, camp arts and craftsy there, right? But it sure looks fancy from the front, doesn't it? Once it's finished. <laughs> Look at this, this looks like my cat got to it, my goodness. So there you go. That's um, That's how you do a double hoop. At least that's how I do a double hoop. Um, you know, I've only done a few of these now, so I'm sure I will be coming up with better ways. I'm sure you guys will be telling me better ways, and we will um, 
maybe have a version 2.0 soon. So that's what I know. Have fun. And thank you. Bye.